If you're seeing this video, the time to self-host has arrived. Okay, so here you have the pros and cons of self-hosting. The pros, you own everything. The cons, you own everything. So if you're going to self-host, you need hardware. And maybe you want a data center like this, but the best way to start, instead of having hundreds of thousands of servers that you have to worry about connecting together, start with exactly one server that you can plug in to Wi-Fi and you'll be good to go. If you want to follow along with this video exactly, you can buy the product used in this video through links in the description that will also support this channel. If not, you can just Google Air 11 Nuke Geekum and you'll probably find it. But I'd appreciate it if you use the links if you can. Thanks. So the main hardware that we'll need in this video is the Geekum Mini Air 11. We'll take it from when it's in the box until it's ready to roll. The other two things you'll need are a mouse and a keyboard. And one more thing after that would be a flash drive or hard drive that you can flash an operating system onto. This is 16 gig, maybe you could squeak by with eight, but I would suggest at least 16. Here it is, let's pull it out. So we have a little nuke set up. We get the keyboard, the mouse, and a portable monitor and plug them into the back here, the HDMI, the keyboard and the mouse, and the power. And I'll plug it in for the first time and we can see what happens. So as you can see, out of the box, we get a Windows 11 computer and we can set it up as a Windows computer and use it as a desktop if we would like to do that. And you just go through the setup process, you have a Windows 11 computer good to go for like 150 bucks or however much it costs. Um, so that's pretty good. But here's the problem. We don't care about Windows. And uh, let's get rid of that nonsense and put something better on there. So in order to turn this into something useful, we're going to need our favorite Linux distribution. For me, I'm going to go for Ubuntu server. So we can Google Ubuntu server download, go over the first link, accept it, go to manual server installation and hit download. That'll download an ISO file. We can check in when that's done. So once you plug in your drive, go onto it and make sure that you don't have anything worth saving. We are going to delete everything on this drive, everything. So just take a look through the files, make sure you don't have anything that you need. If there is something you need on here, either copy it off or go find a different drive to use because this is all going to get completely wiped in a way that we cannot recover. So at this point, you'll need either a USB hard drive that's big enough to hold Ubuntu on it or a portable hard drive works too, USB hard drive of any kind. So this one's 16 gigs, I'm gonna go with the flash drive and we will burn that ISO image that we just downloaded onto this drive so we can boot from it on the nuke. And once we boot from it, we can install Ubuntu server onto the internal hard drive that came with the nuke. So burning the ISO, they have a guide for that for Ubuntu. Other Linux distributions probably have their own guides too. But in this case, we're just going to open this ISO file that we downloaded with the disk image writer. And we're gonna select the thumb drive. Do not select your main disk that is your entire hard drive. You don't want to rewrite your entire PC. Just select the thing that you inserted that you're okay with losing everything on. And we can say start restoring, double check, make sure it's okay to overwrite that thumb drive and I'm going to go ahead and do it. Off it goes, writing. So now you're gonna take that USB drive that you just burned, plug it into the nuke. Remember that you have ports on the front as well. So keyboard and mouse in the back plug in the thing we'll boot from on the front, and let's go ahead and just shut this down and boot from that drive. You can just unplug it and replug it in, and then really spam that key. F12 and escape. There we go, that time we got it. Okay, so you go to the main tab, just go over to save and exit, and you can override the boot and just boot from your USB drive. So I have a SanDisk USB drive here. I see SanDisk on the list of options. I will just hit enter to boot from that. Looks like we already have some Linux stuff going on, perfect. So we're gonna hit try or install Ubuntu server. Okay, once you boot into the installer, uh, we can just walk through 
the installation process here. You can basically accept most of the defaults, but instead of continuing without network, make sure you set up your Wi-Fi. So you can just hit enter on there, edit Wi-Fi, and go ahead and enter your details. So hit choose a visible network, select your network, enter the password, and you should be good to go. As you can see here, we have an IP address from our Wi-Fi adapter here. And down here, it does not say install without network anymore, it just says done. So now you can hit enter, you're good to go. You can ignore the proxy, it just hit enter for this, keep the default. We want to use the entire disk, go ahead and hit done. You can keep the default here, and it's going to overwrite the internal disk, so if you need the product key from the Windows 11 that came with this, and you want that for some reason or another, now would be the time to stop and start over, go boot into Windows, go find that key and save it. But for me, I don't care, so I'm just gonna continue. You can set up your name, the host name for the server, and your username and password now. So I'll call this public nuke, pub nuke, and we will get off to the races. You can skip Ubuntu Pro, I don't know what that is. Definitely check this box. You can hit space to check the box to install OpenSSH server. You really do want that because we're going to set up how to log into this machine remotely so we don't have to deal with this portable monitor setup anymore. And here are a bunch of packages that you can install. I am probably not going to go for any of these right now because I like to install them myself, but they are available. So we'll hit done and off it goes. It doesn't make very much noise when it's done. It just says install complete at the top. So if you're sitting here waiting for it to continue and nothing's happening, it might be done. Either way, once it's finished, hit down, down, and reboot now. And uh, when it says to remove the installation medium, you can just unplug that drive. And then we'll hit enter. Off it goes. So everything should come up fine and you should be able to log in. Now the next thing that we have to do is to set up SSH so that we can log in from another computer and stop having to use this whole portable monitor, mouse, keyboard setup. We just want to be able to put this somewhere on a shelf, leave it by itself, and be able to log into it remotely with great ease. Let's do that now. Since we selected to set up the open SSH server during installation, this is incredibly easy. All you have to do is type in IP address, hit enter, and it's going to give you, for your Wi-Fi adapter, this IP address, 10.0.0.184. In my case, yours will be different, almost certainly. Remember that IP address, and let's go over to our computer and try to log in. So this is actually really straightforward. All you have to do is open up a terminal on Ubuntu, on Mac, on Windows, this should all work the same. Everyone should have an SSH terminal installed. Make sure your laptop or whatever you're accessing this with your computer is on the same network, the same Wi-Fi network as our Nuke, and then just type in that IP address and log in with the username that you set up before. Keep in mind that if you used a different username, you can specify it like this, Steve at 10.0.0.184. Otherwise, it uses the uh, current username that you're logged in as by default. So you do that, type your password, and you're logged in to your nuke. So if you say wall hello, I will show the other screen, but it uh, kind of proves that you're logged in by sending this message. Let's take a look on the other screen. So we can see that our wall or w all right to all has showed up on our nukes screen right here, our trusty nuke. So here we are, we're logged in. This is fantastic. You now have a Linux server that you can log into remotely at any time. You can leave this on all the time and uh, start self-hosting things, which is really very exciting. And I'm hoping to do more videos about what you can do with this now that you have it and refer people back to this video on how to get started. But here you go, you have a Linux system configured. You can log in remotely and do whatever you want with it. It's up all the time. You have some infrastructure for very cheap. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to purchase your own Nuke exactly like this one using the links in the description to support the channel. Thanks. So if you really enjoyed this video, you can go to pagekey.io slash sign up, put in your email, and get updates when new posts are made. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep an eye out for more stuff, and thanks for watching.